Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at how to set up your A7R4 uh, right here or your A92 to use Wi-Fi, tethering uh, to Lightroom and to capture one. Let's do this. So first of all, once again, I wanted to clarify that this is a workaround for using Wi-Fi tethering with the A7R4 and A92. This is not natively supported by either Capture One or Lightroom. So what we're going to be doing in, in, in essence is we're going to use Sony's app to uh, tether the images into your computer. And we're going to have both Capture One and Lightroom monitoring the folders where we're capturing the images. And then they will pop up as you're looking at both uh, either one of those applications. So in essence, we're tethering to them because you're monitoring the folder where we are streaming the images to but it's not natively supported and it's not the fastest uh, doing it. But from my experience, it works just fine with my clients. Um, so I will give you some information as I move. I'll give you an explanation of why it works, but hopefully this will be good for you. I myself, I just find that it's so liberating to be able to do tethering without having to have a cable connected to my computer, especially in me in my situation where I have a couple of rooms with different light setups where I move from one to the other with my clients. I don't have to be, um, you know, with a wire and then uh, I wouldn't be able to tether one or the other. We'll have to move the laptop and everything around. I have, I have a 24 inch monitor that I use as well. So doing it wirelessly works really good uh, for me. So hope this helps. So first of all, we go to the Sony uh, Imaging Edge desktop application. You need to download for Windows or Mac. My instructions are only for Windows. I'm sorry, I'm not a Mac user. So maybe you can still get some benefits from this. So we're going to just click to download it. And I'm going to have the, on the description, you're going to have all the links to download all these files. So I've already done this before, but I'm going to do it again so you guys can see it. This is how it works. Just go install it here. I got everything there. I agree as always. Yes, yes. And you can leave the default. This is not my normal computer for streaming, so I'm just going to leave it default. So it takes a little bit, but this comes up. And that's it. You get the application there. You can just come and launch your application, and it will tell you to download, to download those files. So I just click download, save it, replace it because I already had it. Yes, just next, next as always. Nothing different from any other program. And this might be boring for all of you, uh, or some of you, but I just wanted to go through the whole process just to not leave any details out. But you can always skip and I'll put some timelines in the description. So here we have Sony Viewer. I don't want to do any answers or surveys. So let's close the viewer for now. Just I'm going to use the remote. Uh, it's the one they're going to be using. But first, let's go to the camera and set this up. Okay, guys. So on your camera, go to the menu screen and then just go to the third tab, which is like the network. Scroll down to PC remote function. And here, just turn on PC remote. And then for PC remote method, just select Wi-Fi direct. Okay. And then let's go to page three. And I will normally select 2M as my size for the image that will be transferred to the laptop. Uh, I don't need it to be the original file. And it's just going to slow down the transmission of the files. Um, the intention of these files on the laptop is mainly to show your client how the images are looking and inspire some confidence on the client that you know what you're doing. And so if you want to go original, do it, but it just, uh, to me, just slows down everything. Then go to page two, Wi-Fi direct info. And this is where you'll see at the top, the ID of the Wi-Fi, how it's going to show on your wireless uh, to connect to this network and the password that you're going to be using. So I'm going to show you this on the computer next. So we're back on the computer and we'll go to your wireless settings. It should be something on your desktop, like a network icon. And here you can see what we saw before on my camera screen. The network name is showing us the A7R Mark IV. You can click there. And in my case, I'll just connect automatically or connect. 
I wanted to enter the passwords because I already entered them before, but as I show you on the camera screen, it's right there. You just need to enter it and it should connect. It takes a little bit to connect. And after that, we'll use the remote app to select the camera and it should start uh, tethering right away. Okay, now it's connected. It's gonna show no internet, of course, because it's uh, the camera connected to your computer. So now let's open this remote app and you see the camera is going to be listed here. So you just select it or double click on it and it's going to try to connect to your camera. I'm going to grab my camera. I'm going to remove the lens suit. And as you can see, now you can see my computer and Mario Lemieux, Penguins fan. So that is it. That's the first step to get it working. Oh, there you go. Anyways, this is the first step. So put the cap while I work on the rest. So what will happen now if I take a picture? Actually, let me show you. I'm going to take a picture. This is the 1224 uh, Sony F4 lens. So when you take the picture, it automatically opens your viewer app for Sony. And it puts it right there on the folder that it defaults to. So what we want to do is we're going to change the default folder for what it's grabbing the folders to. What we need to do in order to change the folder when it's saving the photos to is open back, go back to your remote app. And then under File, you'll see Save Folder. So this is the folder where the photos that you take are going to be saved to. So in my case, I created a folder under my drive B, which I call tethering photos when I click there then if I take a photo actually let me bring create the folder here I'm gonna bring the folder back to the main screen so you can see it so I'm gonna take my camera I'm gonna take a photo and after it grabs the photo it should save it on this folder which is now hidden by the viewer but here is the file. So this is how you select which folder you want the remote viewer to select, uh, put the photos in. Now I haven't discovered yet how to not have v the viewer come up every time a photo is uh, tethered. So what I do normally is just make it really small or put it on a different monitor while the other apps are the main focus of my attention. But if I discover it, I will update in the description. And if anybody knows, please comment on, this, on the on the video so we know uh, we can improve the procedure. So now let's go ahead and uh, do this for Lightroom first and have Lightroom monitor this tethering photos folder. So in Lightroom, you need to go to File and then select Auto Import, Auto Import Settings. Make sure to enable the Auto Import option. And then you will tell us on the watch folder, you will tell our Lightroom which folder to be monitoring. So in this case, we know that the folder we want to monitor is the tethering photos folder. So we just select the tethering photos folder and just select it. Now make sure that the folder is empty. I removed the file that was there in the folder earlier because if it's not empty, uh, Lightroom is going to tell you that it needs to be empty. Not a big deal. Just delete or create a new folder for what you want. And then the destination folder is where uh, Lightroom is going to move those photos after it imports them. So in my case, I can just do something like uh, select the same uh, B uh, or Lightroom tether files, for example. And it will create a subfolder inside of it called auto imported photos. You can play with this any way you prefer to organize. This is just to give you an example. So again, watch folder is monitoring the folder what we created earlier to transfer those files from the Sony app. So that's what it's doing. Click OK. Go back to file. Make sure the auto import is enabled. Yes, it is enabled. OK, so now we can go ahead and test this and see how it's looking. So let's take a photo. I'm going to take a photo right here. And it should bring up the app, and Lightroom should be bringing it up too. Let me just minimize this. Okay. And 
is right here. So that's the folder. It shows here auto imported photos under the B drive, which is where I created the folder. So let's try it one more time. Take a picture here of the Cobra Commander. Picture taken. It's going to bring out the app and then Lightroom is going to follow up. So this is going to be the extra delay, but it's not bad. And this is how it works with Lightroom. It's pretty simple. You get the auto important. This is if you, for some reason, like to do this. I prefer Lightroom to show it because it gives me like the f a full screen image where I have more problems making the other apps give me a f completely full screen image. Um, so that's the main reason I prefer to tether to Lightroom when I'm just displaying to my clients. So uh, now let's show you how to do it in Capture One. So here we are in Capture One, and this is how we do it in here. You go to your folder icon, which is the first one in my setup here. You're going to go to the drive where you created that folder where we are tethering the files into the Sony app, which in my case is the drive B and the folder called tethering photos. So in Capture One, what you do is right click on the folder and select set as capture folder. That's all there is to it. Then if you go to at the top, you can go to capture folder. And if I take a new photo now, it should come up in the Sony app somewhere around here. And here you go. It's already in Capture One, so it's pretty fast in Capture One. And nicely enough, it doesn't let the Sony app come on top. So let's try one my picture here of my penguins display. Oh, there comes a Sony app and then comes Capture One. So pretty simple. Just like uh, with Lightroom, it's just monitoring one folder, so it's not doing it natively. But I think it's a, it's a good option. Uh, one of the reasons I like also doing it here is because if I want to check white levels, especially if I'm shooting white background, I can just I like having those numbers at the top where I can see if it's the white is pretty wide or if it needs to expose more or things like that. But you know, whichever you prefer, Lightroom or Capture One, now you have an option to be able to do Wi-Fi tethering to it if, if that's your thing. For me, it's been great. I love not having the cable bugging me all the time. If I need to a different room, go to a different room where I have other light setups, I just move there. We can always go back to the computer and see on the laptop uh, the, the new files without having to be tied up. So anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful. Please share it with other users. And if you have any questions on how to tether wired, uh, I can do another video, but it's fairly simple. It's very similar. I mean, you just tethering wired and you can just use um, Lightroom to monitor the folder we're tethering to. But anyways, if you need me to do one for wired, like for the seminar 3 or cameras with no, doesn't have the Wi-Fi, then please let me know. And I'll do that too. Let me know if you have any questions. Please like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.